when that work of the Calvary and all that is done and it's accomplished what it needs to be done, all that empowered and authority isn't belonging to Christ, the Son of God. It belongs to God. Ming Bai Jiga. Only God holds all power and authority, but it was given to Christ to prove that he was God manifest or expressed in, or the expressed image of God in the flesh for the purpose of redemption. Same thing. All When it's all said and done, God will rule completely over all, just as he did before the incarnation. Same thing. That's it. Okay. I'll just read that last part. As man, he shall cease to exercise any distinct dominion. It wouldn't be like the Christ, I hold all power and authority as the Christ, and now it's all said and done, we don't need that anymore, and now we worship Christ, and now we worship God. It's not going to be that way. All power and authority is God's, and we worship God, and God will be God all in all. There isn't going to be two. Okay. The redeemed, I'll, the, I'll just go ahead. This does not mean... Evidently that the union of the divine and human nature will be dissolved because it will be a glorified body. Okay? When we worship him, we will worship him. This is what we're going to see. Okay? The mediatorial, <laughs> mediatorial <laughs> kingdom shall no longer be continued. The power shall be exercised by God as God. The redeemed will still adore the redeemer as their incarnate God in flesh who made it possible for them to be saved. But it's not two deities. That was it. Okay, let us stand. I know today was going to be a little bit more teachy teachy <laughs> and use a lot of words maybe some of you are familiar with because some of you have studied such things. For some of you, maybe this is very, very new. But I hope that it was presented in a way for you to understand there is only one God. If you only understand this tonight, this would be it. There's only one God. He is an eternal spirit. And sin separated man from God. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. God said he will be your savior. So the only way that God could save you is to take on the form of flesh so he could die because as an eternal spirit, he could not die. And he needed to have blood to shed, sinless blood to atone for your sins. So that eternal spirit of God came into this world through the womb of Mary, lived for about 33 years, and then died on the cross. When the gospel work is done, the door is open whereby we could be saved. But when it's all done and death and hell has been conquered, death and hell does not have dominion over us. The grave couldn't keep Jesus. Why? Because he's not a sinner. He died to pay the debt for our sins, but he is not a sinner. The grave couldn't keep him. He resurrected. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The grave isn't going to keep us either. We're going to resurrect and be with the Lord for eternity. So Jesus is Lord, the creator of all. He is Lord, our Savior. There is no other God. Don't get confused with a lot of that lingo that's out there today in confusion trying to explain how God is one. Yes, there's Father in creation, Father of all. The Son, which is the incarnation of that God. His Spirit, which lives in our heart. But that doesn't mean there is three gods or three deities or three persons in a Godhead. Only one. Only one God. Ever in Scripture is there only ever one God. And I'm so thankful we know who that God is. I'm so thankful we know the name of Jesus. All Paul and authority is in that name. Why? Because it's his name. And he stands behind his name. Pastor Timothy is pastor. He's a father. He's a son, but what's his name? If he told Sister Weir she could go to the bank and, and write a check, if, if checking is still existing here, I'm not even sure, <laughs> okay? And she went to the bank and she wrote that check and she said, if 
father, pastor, son, husband. They're going to say, who? There's no power and authority in that. That is only role play descriptive of different aspects of this one person's life. It is the same with God. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, all of these things are descriptive titles. But the power and authority is in the name of Jesus. Jesus means Yahweh has become my salvation, just as he said. Let's just worship him and thank him for the spirit, his spirit that lives in us and, and the truth that we can understand through his word about him. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to know who you are, Lord God. We thank you for the privilege to interact with you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be confused. It's not you sent somebody to die for us, Lord. You humbled yourself from heaven, Lord. You took on the form of flesh, entered this world, suffered at the hands of those you created to die and be our sacrifice, Lord. We thank you for the humbling that took place. You lowered yourself lower than the angels, Lord God, took on the form of a servant, to die. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the incarnation. We thank you you manifested yourself in flesh to provide salvation for us, Lord Jesus. We thank you we can use the name that's above all names. We think we we thank you we can know you. We thank you for your spirit that dwells in us. Your spirit that gives us joy. Your spirit that gives us strength. Your spirit that cleans us and helps us to be righteous and holy before you, Lord God. Thank you for the power to overcome sin in our fleshly nature, Lord. Thank you for that spirit that puts your truth in our heart that we might not sin against you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege to be a witness, Lord, and interact with you and others, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We can be a witness, Lord. It's your spirit that dwells in us, that you tabernacle among our family, among our friends, among the people in Singapore and America and China and India, Sri Lanka, all these places, Lord. It is your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless these people, Lord. Establish them in your word. Help them to know your word, understand your word, study and show themselves approved to be able to have an answers of what is right and wrong, what is truth and not truth, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for all those that have put their faith and trust in you and you alone for salvation, Lord God. We, Lord, thank you, Lord, with that even now we can bow a knee before you and love you and know you. In that last day, Lord, everybody's going to bow on knee to you, Lord God, and acknowledge you, our Lord. But we can now know that and do that because we know who you are, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that name that we can pray for the sick. Thank you for that name that we can cast out devils and take authority. Thank you for that name, Lord Jesus, that we can use it like a power of attorney on our prayers, Lord Jesus. You said we can ask things in your name, Lord God. You've given it freely to us to use, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.